Welcome participants. Now in this particular final lecture, I am going to focus mainly on the technical application of knitting. Though you have seen uh, weft and warp knitting are used in garments as well, but now the key idea is to explore the knitting potential in different technical fields. So I have selectively chosen some of the technical areas where knitting is having promising potential. I have some of those products also where you can figure it out how different types of knit designs are used uh, and there are some engineering aspects are there in those product development. So uh, the list is not only limited to only few technical areas but definitely the list is broad and I expect you to keep following many other literature and exploring other products of knitting. Let us uh, move to the first application of knitting is the shoe application. So knit structures are now being used in shoes. So in shoes mostly they use weft as well as warp knit structures in making the shoe uppers. But apart from shoe uppers they are now also making completely sockless shoes made up of knit structure and the beauty of knitting is not only you can just make the product but also you can create very beautiful surface design on this product. So that is why knit become very very popular, warp as well as weft knitting both are used in uh, knit structure. But the key question is how you can actually control the fabric properties for these shoe structures. Usually if you see a weft knitted structure they are very highly flexible and extensible but in reality you might have used some of the knit based shoes but usually those shoes are not that extensible although it has the loop architecture in the fabric but how is that possible what material we do use in these type of uh, knit structures so that despite having loops they become inextensible and you can control the extensibility as well. So in reality if you see a shoe uppers it is a part of fabric. So first you create a fabric on especially on jacquard machine, um, you can also create on warp knitting machine but uh, to get a desired extensibility in the fabric we use hot melt yarn. So hot melt yarn is actually fused with the normal filament like polyester or nylon or PP. So usually we use hot melt PET which has the lower melting point 110 degrees or uh, hot melt PP polypropylene which has around melting of 60 degrees Celsius. And then we combine these two filament with higher temperature polyester which is around 260 degrees Celsius. So once you fuse this two different types of filaments and create a fabric structure, so wherever this hot melt get melt and it lock that particular loop, hence you control the extensibility in the fabric structure. I have some samples with me uh, where you can see uh, how these are created, what type of knit designs we do use in making these type of structures. So I have a structure made on. Uh, weft knitted category, so the shoe upper I somehow I got it procured from one of the company which were making the shoe uppers. So definitely in a shoes uh, you have different parts, you have the foam, you have the braided laces but the key part is the upper, upper portion of shoes. So upper portion of shoes is nothing but a kind of fabric. Uh, which with multiple colors and uh, you can see uh, different types of uh, designs are also created. So not only you are changing the colors but also the designs you are also changing. So if you carefully see this structure you can easily find out this is a loop structure okay. So you can easily see this is a knitted structure okay. So and this is a weft knitted structure and all the design principle which I already explained you in previous lectures how you can hide different colors of yarn. So you can see here 
um, black color yarn as well as white color yarns are used selectively to create different patterns and also you are doing widening. So, you can see here we are doing the widening. So, widening has, has been used okay. and also at the edges you are using rib design. So, naturally the design which is used to hide the yarns are jacquard. So, if you see on the top side this is actually the face side of the sew upper uh, on which you have different patterns. So, you, you first cut the fabric and then you paste it on the foam of the sews. So, then it will give get the look of sews. So, this is how you do the pasting. So, pasting and uh, other part sticking with the foams is uh, uh, many companies are doing it separately, but uh, ideally the one component of sews is the sew uppers which usually use the knit design principle. And what type of yarn do we actually use is hot melt as well as a normal filament. So, either polyester and nylons are used. So, this is your normal filament which is uh, there and this white one which is a hot melt ok. So, this is the white one. So, what happens when you mix these two filament and create a fabric structure? Once you compress it at a high temperature, these filaments actually melts and because of that despite having loops in this structure, the structure become less extensible ok because of the fusing of hot melt yarn. So, that is one of the key principle of controlling the extensibility. So, if you use more amount of hot melt yarn, the fabric will become very rigid ok. But if you use less amount of hot melt yarn, the fabric will be very extensible. Also you can use pointer design, tuck design, float design depending on what type of uh, uh, creativity you want and what type of looks you want to give to the sew structure. But this is how a sew upper has been used. And if you want to see what jacquard we have used, so you can clearly see here the pointers are also being used. So, these holes are basically pointer ok. And if you see the other side, basically we are hiding the yarn. So, other side the looks remain similar. So, basically here we use either bird eye jacquard and rib jacquard. So, these are the two jacquards we use in making this sew upper. And if you remember I have showed you different types of jacquard tubular jacquard, float jacquard, bird eye jacquard. So, different types of jacquard I already showed you. So, this is the tubular jacquard, this is your bird eye jacquard, this is your float jacquard. So, because here has the float and this is your rib jacquard. So, if you carefully see the design on the back side, So, how these colors are hidden here? So, if you see the back side, so it also has the similar sequence. So, actually, rib jacquard are used to create this particular fabric. So, not only design, but also the material plays an important role because how much amount of fusing yarn and normal yarn you are mixing it, you can control the property. So, let me show you uh, the importance of fusing yarn as well. So, here is the importance of fusing yarn. So, this is the normal fabric which was created with polyester and uh, you can see it is highly extensible. But after mixing this with a fuse yarn, it is basically lock the structure because the fuse get melt and the loops get locked. So, this is how these two structures are different. So, depending on how much amount of fusing you are using in the fabric that will decide 
the extensibility of the fabric structure. So, in this particular structure, uh, if you carefully see, the fuses are actually melted at different locations. But if you see this particular structure, there is there is no fusing, so you can easily able to extend it. So one without fusing, another one with fusing, and in this SU upper also, it is created after mixing with the fusing yarn. The fusing yarn usually uh, having low melting temperature, either polyester, low melt polyester, 110 degree, or low melt polypropylene, 60 degree and it is mixed with normal polyester which is around 260 degree or nylon to create a shoe upper. And knit design sometimes we use tubular jacquard and uh, float jacquards, uh, but here also rib jacquards are used. So if you want to work in this uh, shoe design aspects, uh, you can also see the influence of hot melt, uh, what type of hot melt yarn you are using and how they are controlling the properties what is the content or the compositions we are using, whether you are using 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent, role of knit designs. So far we used uh, the jacquard design, but also you can uh, play with different uh, stitch type and see the properties. Uh, also uh, whenever we are going for fusing process or the composite process, the influence of temperature, pressure, curing time can be also checked and uh, you can see how the properties of this Sue uppers changes in terms of tensile characteristics, GSM, permeability, abrasion or cyclic. So many scopes are there, so if you are really interested you can pick any of these uh, small project from Sue part and keep doing research and explore knitting in this area. Now let us move to second area which is surgical mess. So surgical mess is very also very very important where uh, Whenever uh, there is any surgery, especially in hernia meshes, hernia is one of the key medical problems where we do the surgery, we cut the component of certain part of the body and we provide some mesh or support surface. So surgical meshes are also one of the key market of uh, weft and warp knitted structure and here um, mostly warp knit designs are used and it provides support surface near to the surgical area and once it provides the support surface depending on the fibers and the pore size and volume, the cell growth is controlled. So you can see it here, so this is one of the mess which is created by the loops of the fabric. Uh, if you zoom it, it will look like this and these are how the cells growth and do the wound healing. So usually in surgical mess, the materials that are used for creating surgical mesh are PP, polyester, uh, polytetrafluoroethylene, uh, those type of meshes are used. But from the engineering point of view, from the structure engineering point of view, warp knit designing is also very, very important here. So anyone who is actually working in the mesh areas, they need to understand the warp knitting very carefully because uh, what will be the dimension of these meshes? actually play important role in terms of cell pro growth and tissue engineering. So this mess will have different responses um, if you change its pore size and dimensions. So warp knit designs uh, here plays a very, very important role. So in one of the lecture also I showed you how you actually control the size of this mess with the help of loops. So um, I have many types of meshes with me where you can actually see how I can control different types of structure. So let me show you different mess uh, which uh, is possible of different sizes. So if you see from the left, the this here the mess size is very, very small in mm. Here also if you see compared to the blue one, the mesh size is slightly bigger. If you go for even different mesh size, here little bit bigger holes are there. If you further go this one, here you can see the size are even bigger and then if you go here the size are even much, much bigger and the finally the last one whose size is 
even much bigger. So, you can see how WAPNet gives you the flexibility in terms of uh, controlling the mesh size, but the key idea here is even if you have to really control the mesh size in a WAPNet structure, you need to really be confident on overlap and underlap variations that you can do it on the guide. So, as I showed you in the in the lecture also, if you really want to create these meshes, first of all you need to first understand what should be the right dimensions which is required for surgical mesh. So, some standards are given like uh, the pore size if if the dimension is greater than 2000 micrometer, it is a very large pore and if it is less than 100 micrometer, it is a micro pores. So, depending on micro pores to large pores, um, the size of the mesh is different and uh, the GSM, uh, actually if the GSM is greater than 90 gram per meter square, uh, it is a heavy weight and if it is less than 35, then it is a ultra light weight. So, depending on the requirement, either you have to control the pore size or GSM. You can also use multi-filament and monofilament yarn uh, if you want to create different uh, types of fabric meshes. Uh, but uh, if the design principle, if you really want to design a particular mess, the main principle for making mess is partially threaded design uh, guide bars. So, in a guide bar, instead of filling the warp yarn in each guides, you actually place selectively some of the guides. So, in making a uniform net structures, usually alternate guides are kept empty um, intentionally, so that it holes can be created in a warp net structure. So, for example, if you see the black and blue one, uh, if you see the follow the black yarn, so it is actually making um, 5 loops in this pillar section. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 loops in this pillar section and then it is shifting to next pillar section. So, this is the pillars, pillar height and uh, the warp yarn is first making tricot in this section and then it is shifting to next pillar. So, this is how it is moving between needles. So, this particular guide bar which is there at the sixth position, it is actually moving to three needle position. So, first it is making a tricot and then with the help of open loop and it is shifting to third column or third needle and again here they are making a tricot in two consecutive columns. Uh, similarly, if you follow the white yarn at the sixth position, it will be doing exactly in opposite direction. So, the white yarn in this position. So, this is how it is doing. So, uh, the black one is moving towards left direction, transitioning towards right direction and the white one is transitioning towards left direction, which you can see it from here. So, here is the transition. So, the black one after making loops, it moves to the right side pillar and the white one after making loops, it moves to the left side pillar and this is how the transition has been done. Similarly, the position at fourth position, they will be doing uh, the same thing, eighth position and fourth position. Uh, so, you have, you can easily see the guide bars at fifth position, seventh position, third position and first position are empty. Because of this, these two pillars are not connected. So, a holes are being created. So, these two pillars, so this is two pillars are not connected and a holes has been created. So, this is what is opening is created and because of having partial threaded guide bars. So, this is how you create the mess, but uh, overlap and underlap are very, very important because the way you play with different overlaps and underlaps, you create different pillar designs and different shapes of this mess. So, net pillars and opening. So, these are the two key things. I also mentioned you if you really want to change the shape of this mesh, you can uh, change the shifting. So, for example, here uh, after making pillars, it is shifting to the third column and here it is shifting to the 1, 2, 3, 4, fifth column. So, uh, so this is how you can change the shape of the mesh. 
So I have some uh, from the literature I found it some useful uh, notation of uh, lapping movement as well as lapping plan for bar 1 and bar 2 structure where you can get different size of mesh. So for example, if you want to create this type of mesh, this is the lapping plan for bar 1 and 1 0, 1 2, 2 3, 2 1, bar 2, 3 4, 3 2, 2 1, 2 3. So this is just the uh, uh, lapping plan. So you arrange the chains in that sequence and you will get this type of mesh. Similarly, if you go for this type of meshes, uh, here you can easily see the holes are of different sizes. So some bigger holes and smaller holes are also created compared to this one where all the holes are of uniform size. So this is more uniform mesh. This is more non-uniform mesh because it has bigger as well as a smaller size. Um, if you go, if you see this one, the much bigger holes and smaller holes are there. So this is how depending on what type of lapping movement you are giving to bars, it creates different types of holes. Uh, also sometimes you can also have more random types of meshes. So these are three body structure. This is also a three body structure. So here you are intentionally decreasing the size of the holes. Uh, because it uh, actually helps in cell, cell growth. So naturally this is the medical part. So once you design this uh, meshes, you can collaborate with some of the medical professionals. Uh, you can create these type of meshes and see how the cells are grow growing on these surfaces. So that's again the engineering part. So you need to understand two, three different engineering, not only just knitting is sufficient, but also you need to collaborate with medical professionals to work on surgical meshes uh, because the design possibilities are important. Similarly, medical professionals also would not be able to understand and appreciate the importance of apnate structure, but then naturally when you collaborate together, uh, you can uh, do a smart engineering in surgical meshes. Uh, so the research scope, if you see the different materials which is available, PP, polyester, polytetrafluoroethylene, so you can change the material and you can see the performance of different mesh. Uh, from knitting part, you can change the overlap and underlap variation. You can control the mesh shape and size and you can see the performance of mesh. So key properties of the mesh that need to be studied is like tensile, like what is the modulus, extensibility, strength, the bursting properties of these type of meshes. Uh, GSM because when you are playing with different overlap and underlap, definitely the GSM of the fabric will be changed. So that also need to be checked. Uh, pore size, you can also learn how overlap and underlap controls the pore size, uh, tear and cell growth. So all of these key properties you can link. So this is again a one uh, good opportunities if you are really interested and uh, want to pursue some career in surgical meshes and medical one. Uh, you can use the uh, importance of warp knitting in your field. Now let us uh, go to the third part, knitting for agriculture and construction. So again agriculture and construction is one of the key areas where warp knit structure are mostly used. Uh, usually if you see uh, in knitting, uh, stead nets uh, for steading some areas, we use uh, a fabric which is actually made up of warp net structure, wind sill nets uh, for separating the fields, for making some kind of partitions, we use nets uh, that is again a warp net structure. Sometimes we use anti birds nets, insect nets to protect the crops, uh, uh, crop covers, also sometimes we use mosquito nets. So all those nets we, uh, which is highly porous and give some advantage. Uh, here we use knit, warp knit for making these type of structures. So uh, whenever any of such uh, meshes are used in agriculture textile or construction textiles, the key aspects as the ventilation should not be bad. It is used in covering, but one need to make sure there is a sufficient permeability in the structure because uh, the good amount of moisture and uh, air should be uh, proper uh, throughout this fabric structure. So the ventilation is very, very important. It should be also mechanically strong. 
because of the wind, uh, the fabric should not torn out very easily. Uh, it should be very flexible because the contours will be uh, very difficult to match up. So, whatever warp knit structure you are using, uh, apart from these two properties, the flexibility is also very, very important. Uh, what type of materials you are using because uh, such type of nets are exposed to the harsh sunlight, water, uh, wind, so all of these, uh, it should be resistance with wind, water, sunlight and also it should be non-toxic, so it should not harm the crops. So agriculture textile is uh, also uh, very, very important and where warp knit structure is very popular. So I have some of the samples with me. I can show you how they are used, so how they can be used in different structure. So this is uh, this is one of the structure which is used in agriculture. So this is the pillar structure and the second bar is just making the underlap, connecting it. So this is used in agriculture for shedding. This is this one is a insect nest, nets. You can see the pore size is very, very poor. So only it's a very good permeability because it's very highly porous, but the pore size is so small that no insects can come out. So this is also used in agriculture. This is insect nets. The another one is uh, also here you can see the much bigger nets. This is, this is also used in agriculture for, uh, for making partitions. Um, and all these material are high density polyethylene. So it is very, very strong. For protecting the nets, here also you can see the net size is slightly uh, bigger. So it is used in mosquito nets and uh, insects of those size, it can be easily trapped. So this is a mosquito net fabric. I have another set also where uh, you can see different types of shedding because sometimes to protect the crops from harsh sunlight, we use different sets of fabrics of different colors. So this is all made up of pillar stitch on one bar and only underlap on the second bar. So if you see these two, so if you see these two structure, the green one and blue one, so blue one is little bit porous, but the green one is highly non-porous. So the setting, uh, it, it almost said almost 80 to 90 percent of the sunlight. This is up 60 percent sunlight. So to protect the crops from different seasons, we use different types of setting. More open structures are also there. So this is, this is even uh, more open. So depending on uh, what type of lapping movements you are giving, you can control the setting behavior. So in agriculture and construction also, um, there are a lot of research scope you can go for. You can, you can check different types of materials, especially PP, polyester, polytetrafluoroethylene is also used. Similar to surgical mess, uh, you can play with different knit designs, overlap and underlap, different types of mess sizes and shapes. Uh, some of the key properties you can check is like tensile, bursting, GSM, tear and porosity. So uh, these are the, some of the research areas that need to be explored because in the market you will find these type of fabrics easily available but you will hardly find any literatures which, which study on how having different types of materials and knit designs, how you can control the fabric properties. So that's also a, a small project you can work on. Uh, on different aspects. So in the next class, I will talk about more application related to e-textiles, which is a more demanding uh, in, in this 21st centuries. So catch you in the next class.